Hey, AP Chem, uh, Zoom is down. So I'm gonna make a quick video. Maybe we won't use this. Maybe Zoom will be working shortly. Um, but I'm gonna make a video talking quickly about our lab. Uh, we had some other stuff planned for today, but we kind of gotta be uh, talking in a back and forth motion uh, in order to be successful. So uh, let's just go through a couple of our problems. I wanna talk about how the galvanized metal lab should be set up you know, what it looks like on your final document. Um, I'm gonna go through the rest of the pre-lab with you so you can have a better idea of what your uh, results should be. And then again, we'll talk about the format a little bit um, for this first go around. And the things that we were gonna do, let's not do them. Um, but you should then put aside some time to work on your vocabulary uh, for the first section or the first chapter, whatever you want to call it. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So if you don't have your galvanized metal lab out, uh, go ahead and get that thing out. We're going to go through those pre-lab questions that I said, hey, let's do these things on uh, Monday. Uh, and then we can talk through some other stuff. So I'm going to disappear over here to the dot cam. Uh, I'm going to write in a big Sharpie. So hopefully you can see everything that I'm writing up here. And then these videos are kind of nice because you can stop them whenever you want. All right. So anyways, I can also zoom in on this thing. So uh, we, I wrote this down. The other day, right? Let's save this last part for Monday. Um, but before that, we didn't we have something else going on? Pre lab? Did we do all the pre lab? All right. So this is our last pre lab question, right? So let's save this last part for Monday. So this last part: How many moles of zinc are present in a two gram sample? How many atoms are present? So when you're thinking about writing up your conclusion, you are not just talking about the results that you got from your lab. You're talking about the data and what it means. So in your conclusion, you should be writing about, you know, hey, I remember how to convert between units. I remember, you know, and maybe discuss it a little bit. Um, in this particular problem, we're going to be looking at uh, using the ideal gas law. So you're explaining, hey, we use the ideal gas law. This is how you use it. This is what it means. So your conclusion is really a conclusion, reflecting back on what you did um, during the lab. All right. Let's do this on Monday. So... Uh, we are looking at a little bit of stoichiometry here. How many, what volume of hydrogen gas would be produced? So the chemical reaction that you guys should have come up with from the other day, remember hydrogen gas is diatomic and we were making zinc chloride. This is not zinc chloride. Zinc chloride is ZnCl2. So the big purpose of this was to, you know, revisit talking through some things with how things bond, talk about ionic charges, plus charges, minus charges. What does that look like? Um, how do we get this? So we're going to continue working through this. Obviously, that's really what our first chapter is about: is quickly revisiting uh, names and formulas of things. This would not be balanced. To balance it, we need two uh, molecules of hydrochloric acid for every one molecule of hydrogen gas. All right, so how many atoms? What volume? All right, so we're at what volume? So we have a two gram sample of zinc. We know that we make this many moles that it's that many moles of zinc. So this is actually stoichiometry. Um, so we know that there are this many moles of zinc being consumed 
uh, in our activity. It is a two to one to one ratio. To one ratio, right? We had a huge excess of hydrochloric acid during this experiment. I didn't even really measure it out. I just poured some into a beaker for the reaction to take place. The hydrochloric acid was way in excess. So this was our limiting reagent. When the bubbles stopped, the zinc had been transformed into zinc chloride. All right, this zinc here is zinc metal. This zinc here is ionic zinc. All right, questions? So, okay, um, so our conversion here, um, for every one mole of zinc, we created one mole of H2. That math is pretty nice, right? Our unit cancels out. Uh, we get 0 0.0306 moles of H2. Now the question though says, if I zoom, you zoom in here, it's only 85% efficient, meaning we're not really going to make 0 0.0306 moles of H2. We're only going to make 85% of that. So how would you do that mathematically? I would just multiply that number by the 85 as a decimal, right? And so you're actually only making that many moles of gas. Because it's only 85% efficient. And I know that my sig figs are not right, but that's okay right now. You don't have to round your answers until the very end to stay accurate. Okay, so uh, we're getting there on this third part, this third question. We're getting there. Moving on. So do you remember PV equals NRT? So anytime you have gas that is not standard, meaning not at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure, uh, you got to use the ideal gas law. P for pressure, V for volume, N for moles. R is a constant. Uh, T is for temperature. Because this is a gas, all gases have to be in Kelvin. All right. So um, the question is saying what volume? So we're going to solve for volume. So if I was to solve for volume, I would divide both sides by P. So we end up having V equals moles, constant, temperature, over pressure. All right, that is our ideal gas law. Again, in your conclusion, ah, it's fuzzy. In your conclusion, um, these are the things you should be writing about. What is stoichiometry? Explain it. How'd you use it? What is the ideal gas law? Explain it. How did you use it? All right, so now that I have that, we are solving for volume. The pressure is, uh, we know our moles, right? We just did that, 0 0.02601 moles of H2. Um, our constant is a constant, so for R, where do you get that? So for you guys, I would Google, the barometer I have in here is in inches of mercury, 
the um, if you Google R value in inches of mercury, you'll find it. Um, typically, if you look at your AP cheat sheet, uh, you are given the R value for atmospheres and KPA and I think millimeters of mercury. All right, so there's there's all the R values you could ever uh, want out there. So because we are in inches of mercury, by the way, our pressure that day, 29.99 inches of mercury. Um, actually, hold on here. This question's written up different. Hydrogen gas, so it's actually given us millimeters of mercury. I must have rewrote this question. That's my mistake. So our pressure is 755 millimeters of mercury on that particular day. Um, the temperature I gave you is 30 degrees Celsius, but remember, we're not, we don't ever use Celsius um, when we're dealing with gases. It needs to be Kelvin. Do you remember the magical number for Kelvin? Uh, add 273 to it. So our temperature is 303 Kelvin. And then finally, I'm kind of out of order up here. Um, if we were looking for an AP cheat um, this, the R value in millimeters of mercury. Here, I'm going to go grab a cheat sheet real quick. Ah! So if you looked at an AP uh, cheat sheet here, you get all these numbers and all these values and all of these things. So if you, you know, every category is bold, highlight it. So we're looking at gases here. You get some gas constant R values. Doesn't give you millimeters of mercury directly, but millimeters of mercury and tor are the same. So we're going to use this 62.36 uh, number for R. 62.36. And R values have pretty crazy units attached to them. So if you look at it, it's liter, liter tor over mole Kelvin. We're just going to change tor into millimeters of mercury, since they are the same things. So liter, millimeter of mercury over mole Kelvin. And what ends up happening with your units, millimeters of mercury cancel out, mole cancels out, Kelvin cancels out, we're left with the unit liter. All right, I'm not going to do the math for you. You guys can type things in your calculator. Multiply, 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 divide. Now, actually, um, there is still a little bit more to it, but because of time, uh, we're not going to get there. Because what it does say in the problem is that they, we collected... Uh, gas over water is what the problem says, and it gives us the vapor pressure of water. Um, so there could be a little bit more to it, but we're just going to keep it simplified for now uh, and say that that's that. All right, that's it. So you can do your math. Cool. You can get your answer for that last part of your pre-lab. So again, for your actual data... And what the purpose of our lab is, when you are analyzing your data for this lab, you should be calculating the number of moles. 
hey, we did something like that in our pre-lab. Look back. You should be calculating uh, the number of atoms. Cool. You should be calculating the volume of hydrogen gas based on our current conditions. Uh, for this lab, let's just use the current conditions that were in um, the pre-lab part C. All right, it is a little warm in here, so we'll say it's 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, probably was not, it was probably like 26 degrees Celsius. But you can just use those same numbers and we can go with that same pressure of, what was it, 755 or whatever it was. All right, so that's fine, just use that uh, pressure. And then the last one, determine the enthalpy values associated with the chemical reaction. Um, we'll just cross that off, all right? It got hot. It got hot. Uh, you were not here to experience that. Uh, I didn't put thermometers in all of them. It got hot. So you could talk to yourself and say, like, was, was that endothermic or exothermic? It got hot. So it felt hot to you. So was it releasing heat or absorbing heat? So we could calculate things. Um, do you remember Q equals MC delta T? Do you remember that from sophomore year? We could do that. Let's not do that uh, because you don't have a delta T. We have everything else. You don't have a delta T. That's okay. All right, so we can go ahead and cross off, determine the enthalpy associated. Okay, so we'll shorten it up. Maybe if Zoom works a little later, we'll get together, but there's that. So as far as I got some emails over the weekend, like, oh, how do I actually set this thing up? What does this actually look like? So really, each of these sections, it should be a sectioned out part of your Google Doc. So your experiment, you know, for us right now, this is going to be kind of freebie points. Um, but then everything else should be sectioned out. And where it makes sense, you're going to go ahead and put a, you know, in your Google Doc, put a little heading, a little title. You know, your title, what are you calling this lab? Your objectives, what was our objective? It's really right there in your purpose, all right? So pull out your purpose, um, state it clearly. Your plan is really, um, for this lab, your plan, hopefully you kicked around some ideas the other day um, with your group members on how you were going to successfully do that. It probably wasn't super detailed, that's kind of your plan. What do you think you need to do? Uh, the plan is going to look a little different uh, in labs moving forward. Your notes, if you look at it, it's really just those pre-lab questions. So again, have a subtitle, notes, have your work shown under it. Your procedure is a little bit more detailed. You should have it, procedure, and then just do bullet points or do numbers on what your procedure is. You should have your materials listed out. Um, as well as within the actual procedure. The most important thing is that you are including names and formulas. So you don't just say hydrochloric acid, you say hydrochloric acid, HCl aqueous, 20 milliliters of six molarity concentration or six molarity. Um, you gotta include everything about your chemicals. Your other chemical was just a piece of galvanized metal. So you don't have a whole lot of things on that. Um, your data and observations, hopefully you uh, were able to get some pictures of what you were looking at. Remember the one, one of them turned yellow, had a yellow solution. So whatever, you're not gonna have a whole lot of information here, lots of free points this time. Um, not gonna worry too much about accuracy this time because, hey, I did your experiment. Um, cool. Analysis is you then going through and taking your data 
and doing some calculations with it, making sure that your purpose, right, the purpose of your lab besides the enthalpy, you are calculating the purpose. So you are calculating um, atoms of zinc, moles of zinc, stuff like that uh, about your metal. There is an error analysis. Your error analysis should actually be a thing. So this, I'm gonna give you the real numbers. Okay. And I'll put them up here. Here's the real numbers. So for real, your real numbers, each side of your zinc, can you see that? Each side of your galvanized metal should be 0 0.015 centimeters thick. That's, that's what it should be based on standards for making sheet metal. Each side, you know, think about it. You have a piece of metal. Each side uh, is 0 0.015. Total would be 0 0.03. So remember, even though this looks like a flat piece of metal, it is a three-dimensional prism, right, with zinc coating the top and the bottom. Where I cut the metal, there is no zinc there. It's just steel exposed. The zinc is only on the top and bottom, okay? When you are looking again at your uh, error, uh, if you don't remember how to do an error calculation, just Google it. It's your, you know, what you should have got minus what it, you got, divide it by what you should have got times 100, um, but you can Google it. And then again, for your conclusion, you should be writing about a lot of things. There is a chemical reaction between an acid and a metal. We did some mole conversions. We did some stoichiometry. We did the ideal gas law. All right, so those are the things you should be discussing in your conclusion. For this lab, let's make everybody's conclusion unique to them, unique to you. Um, for this lab, for your turn-in, how about you keep everything the same for your group through the analysis, and you should be working on one master document, right? So let us turn in the master document uh, through the analysis part, and then we will submit our conclusions at the bottom of that same document. So I don't have 1 million documents to look at. So you could just say like, hey, this is me, I'm Joe, Joe's conclusion, and then Joe's conclusion, uh, Tina's conclusion, and then Tina's conclusion. Um, and so just break out your conclusion separately. I hope that helps uh, clear up some issues. Hopefully, uh, Zoom is working shortly. So do that. Um, any extra time you guys have today, the other thing you can work on then is just vocabulary. So the vocabulary document, uh, please just use your uh, ebook for that, the glossary of your ebook to get proper definitions. Um, feel free to Google images and just click and drag them in there uh, as you fill that thing out. Hopefully Zoom is fixed. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to email me. I'm just hanging out here. Um, but we have no way to communicate face-to-face -face as of now. All right, guys. See ya.